Now, we are going to talk about a special business process called subcontracting. Subcontracting. Let's see what we can infer from the name. Contract. What's a contract? It's something that you outsource to somebody. They do all the work for you and you pay them. That's a contract. Now, what's a subcontract? A subcontract is where you are responsible for the final product, but a part of it is being outsourced. For example, a wedding cakes is not your specialty. Meaning, our coffee shop does not produce wedding cakes but let's say you get an order or you keep getting order for wedding cakes what you can do is you can outsource the wedding cakes to some other company you give them the material they'll manufacture it for you or they'll make it for you and then you sell it to your customer so you want a wedding cake, right? But you don't have the capacity to make a wedding cake or you think it's not your core focus. So what you do is, you let somebody, like a wedding cake designer or somebody who specializes in wedding cakes, and he is your subcontract. Now, there is a difference between a subcontractor and a vendor. A subcontractor can be a vendor, no doubt. A vendor can also be a subcontractor. But in the context of subcontracting, I'm calling him specifically subcontractor. Let me explain why. Now, this wedding cake has a certain set of specifications. I'm not just asking the vendor to prepare the wedding cake and send it to me. I am going to supply the raw materials and in return this subcontractor is going to send me the wedding cake or the finished good. Now, in the context of wedding cake, this might seem very trivial, isn't it? You know, these products are not very expensive, right? The raw materials. What does a wedding cake need? Flour, sugar, colors. These are not very expensive. The subcontractor can very well go to the market and get all this stuff himself. But think of it in the context of large-scale engineering products. Say GE is manufacturing a generator. Now there are certain parts of it that are very well suited for subcontracting. For example, the radiator of a diesel generator is a specialty. There are certain vendors or subcontractors who specialize in radiators and it's a custom job, meaning GE provides the material and the subcontractor uses that material, steel or whatever, let's say it's a special grade steel that the vendor cannot procure himself. So GE provides that material and then the vendor does the job and sends the finished product. Another example, same GE, GE makes turbines, right? So the turbine is going to be something like this with the fans right here, right? This is a turbine. You know how a turbine is milled? They take a solid piece of metal a cylinder 
right and then mill it into the shape of a turbine and then remove all this material right it's one solid piece of product it's not something that's bent it's not a piece of metal that's bent they mill it out of a solid aluminum or whatever shade it is now GE has so many different subcontractors one two three again does GE use SAP I don't know and I don't care but you can substitute GE with Pratt & Whitney or any company where the process is very specialized or the parent company GE in this case feels that it's not their core competency and somebody else can do a better job. So there are these milling companies with large lathe machines and they do the milling. And let's say this cylinder is a special material. It's not aluminum, it's something else. So the vendor can't procure it himself. So GE has to procure it. Maybe it manufactures it from, from some special raw material and sends the raw material over to the vendor or subcontractor. And he does the milling using the lathe machine. That's his specialty. And then finally, he sends back the fin or the turbine. This is subcontracting. So how does the process work in SAP? You raise a PO with the vendor. You can call it vendor or subcontractor. I'm just using a special word called subcontractor in the context of subcontracting. In SAP, they are just created as vendors. No different. So the PO goes to the vendor. Now the vendor also needs to receive the raw materials, right? So these raw materials are shipped over to the vendor's place and the vendor does his job, right? So the vendor has a factory or whatever. He does his job and finally he returns the finished product and what about the raw materials? The raw materials are consumed. It's possible that he might be left out with some raw materials. For example, it's not just raw materials, it's byproducts also that are important. For example, if raw materials are left out, meaning there is some raw material that was not used, there was no need to use it. Maybe GE sent some extra raw material just in case meaning he can return the raw material or sometimes excess raw material would have been consumed in which case he can say hey you know what i have consumed more than what was sent to me so can you reimburse me for that right so this is over consumption of raw material in which case we need to give more raw material to the vendor and he can also send us the byproducts for example in the case of milling when you mill this entire sheet or cylinder you get a whole lot of scrap maybe that scrap is very valuable this is called as a byproduct. The vendor could choose to sell it or if it's an expensive product, we might ask the vendor to send the byproduct back to us. And that's what I mentioned by byproduct here. See, there are so many things that go back and forth. Raw materials going to the vendor, finished product coming back from the vendor returning of raw materials that were not consumed 
or in case of over consumption requesting for more raw material to be sent out to the vendor and in some cases there are by products that the vendor produces as part of the whole manufacturing process and we could ask the vendor to ship them back to us right now purely from a goods movement and ownership perspective so when you transfer raw materials from your warehouse to the vendor's plant is it a sale no it's not it's not a sale it's a transfer posting the goods are still our property we're just sending it over to the vendor so it's not a sale the vendor need not pay for it right and this is also an example of transfer posting returning from the vendor's or subcontractor location to our factory right and when he sends the finished product this is an example of an actual purchase and we own the finished product and the finished product is being generated by the vendor and he's sending it to us so from a goods movement perspective you got to understand each of these arrows what goes out what comes in what is the sale what is not and what kind of goods movements are required for each of these cases okay so how do we do it in the system let's build a use case we'll take the same classic example of wedding cake so we need a cake a wedding cake this is the finished product that we need a quantity of 1 and to produce this the subcontractor needs flour say 5 pounds and sugar say 5 pounds these are the raw materials that we're going to supply to the subcontractor or vendor and he's going to ship us back the wedding cake right so let's create these three materials wedding cake flour and sugar and create a purchase order and subcontract this to the vendor so wedding cake flour sugar mm01 wedding say cake 01 industry retail and say this is finished product enter we need the basic view we need the purchasing view and we need the accounting view and storage view right maybe mrp1 view enter and this is for the chicago plant and storage location is pick goods it okay and this is wedding cake and you could measure it in pounds or you could measure it in each in this case i'm just going to put each so one wedding cake enter purchasing purchasing growth fine mrp just just put pd some data in the mrp fields lot size ex and the plant storage location this is okay valuation class this is a finished goods so we do 7920 
and let's say this is moving average. Enter. The robot exit. Yes. So we have created a wedding key. Okay. Schedule margin key. In house production, five days. Okay. See. Okay. Wedding cake is ready. So this material is ready. It's called wedding cake zero one right and then we need flour and sugar so do a flour f l o u r and it's raw material right let's see if flour already exists if not we're gonna create them okay does not exist so do a basic purchasing we don't even need MRP, storage location maybe, and accounting. And this is in the Chicago plant. And say raw materials and enter. Oh, material already maintained. That's great. Change. Flower. basic data, purchasing, accounting. We just want to quickly view it before we say we are done here. Lover, good, okay. Okay. Accounting, everything is good. And sugar, right? Sugar, zero, one. Do we have that? Nope. So let's go create it immediately. Sugar is more or less a copy of flour, right? From a material management perspective. So I'm going to say copy from flour. And what do we need? Basic data one, purchasing, plant general storage, accounting and we're going to copy from the Chicago plant on raw material storage location enter 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 and we're good to go all right so we got these three materials right what do we do next? Let's go ahead and create a purchase order. 4001. And the material is wedding cake. Quantity of one. We want to order one wedding cake. What's the price of that? Let's say it's $300. I don't know if it's really expensive or not for a $300 wedding cake, but let's just put some value. All right, now, this is procuring a wedding cake from the vendor 4001. Is that really the case here? Not, right? We don't want to just procure that material. We want to subcontract that material. How do you convert this item into a subcontract? Set an item category of L. L for subcontracting. Enter. Okay, and it says not possible to determine any components. What does it mean by that? We said a wedding cake, in order to manufacture a wedding cake or make a wedding cake, you need flour and sugar, right? Where is that relationship? 
that relationship is created as a bomb or a bill of material. And SAP is saying that it cannot find the components, meaning it doesn't know that wedding cake should be manufactured using the raw materials flour and sugar. And it says, I cannot determine the components. It would not have asked this if you're doing a standard order. But because you're doing a subcontracting, it says, I don't know the components. We say, okay, we can enter the components manually. How? Go to the material tab at the line item level, click on components, and we can add the components manually. All right, a wedding cake requires flour, five pounds, right? And then sugar, five pounds. Enter. We're good. Go back. All right. Uh, let's check if everything is okay. No messages issued. Save it. Standard PO is created. All right. Go there, pick up the PO number, control C. So now you got to deliver the raw materials to the vendor. How do you do it? There are two ways to do it. One way is to do a transfer posting. And why transfer posting? because it's neither a sale nor a purchase. So you won't use the standard movement types for a goods issue or goods receipt. So you go to my go, do a transfer posting for flour and sugar, choose the right movement type. The other way is via a report. Go to logistics, materials management, So purchase order, reporting, and SC stocks per vendor. So it's subcontracting stocks per vendor. So go there, uh, you vendor 4001, and uh, plant Chicago 1. You could filter it out by whatever parameters you like, and execute it. So it will show you the list of components that you need to supply to the vendor. In this case, you need to supply against this PO, line number 10, on this date, five pounds of what? Of flour and five pounds of sugar, right? So what you can do is select them and do a PGI or post goods issue. All right, from which storage location? The storage location where you have the goods, right? They are supposed to be there in raw material storage location. Okay. It says it doesn't have that material, right? We've just created that material, but we didn't post any. So what you got to do is go back and put some of the material in stock. How do you do that? You do it using MyGo movement type 561, initial stock entry. But before we do that, let's go check the stock. For sugar in raw material stores locations, Chicago plant, there's no stock. Now, how about flour? Okay, so we do have something in raw. Okay, that's good. 
So all we need to do is enter some stock for sugar. So my go. Goods receipt. Not against purchase order, but against other. And what's the material? Sugar. Sugar 01. How much? Say 100. Where? Not 501, but 561 from the Chicago plant and raw material storage location. Okay. Save it. Good. Let's go quickly check the stock and make sure we have enough sugar to supply to our vendor. Sugar. Execute. We do have sugar now. So we have sugar as raw material in our warehouse. We have flour as raw material in the warehouse. Now let's go supply to the vendor. All right, select them, do a post goods issue. All right, so item is posted. You see that in green, right? So that means whatever stock that we needed to supply to the vendor has been posted. Now, again, let's go back to MMBE and check the stock. Say of sugar. We have supplied five pounds to the vendor, right? See that? Stock provided to vendor. And that's counted separately. So out of the hundred that we have in stock, five has been posted to the vendor. So far so good. Same thing would have been the case with flour. Now, after some days, the vendor has made the wedding cake, maybe within a day or two days, let's say. And now, he is ready to ship it back to us. And what do we do? We take the cake and eat it, right? No, we don't. Against the purchase order, you go receive it, right? Although we would love to eat it. Okay, now, there is one quantity of wedding cake that has come in. And what happened to flour and sugar? One of it is flour and one of it is sugar because I didn't change the description. So did he consume five quantity of, or five pounds of flour and five pounds of sugar? Well, we don't know. Let's just leave it at that, okay? So if you go to line item, wedding cake, and put it in the baked goods stores location, click item, okay. Check, document is okay. And save it. Document is saved. Go to an MMBE for wedding cake. And you get one quantity of wedding cake in the Chicago plant. We're good, right? Now, it might be possible that he might have under-consumed the stock like flour or sugar and he's ready to send it back. Now, don't think about the one kilo or one pound of flour and sugar. That's silly, I know. But over the course of time, let's say we give 10 orders a day of wedding cakes. And we keep supplying the flour and sugar, colors and whatnot, all the raw materials. Over the course of the day, he might accumulate some flour or he might fall short of some sugar. He might have made it somehow, but we need to supply the necessary raw materials to balance it out. Right? 
Now, if you go to MMBE and look at sugar that we had 100 pounds of, out of which we have shipped 5 pounds as raw materials, now you don't see any of those materials supplied to the vendor, right? It's all gone. It's consumed. Now, at this point, the vendor might call us and say, hey, you know what? I forgot. I have an excess of 10 pounds of flour or sugar. I can ship it back, right? This is called underconsumption. Or he might say, some of the sugar you gave me was bad, so I had to use some of my sugar and, you know, I had to overconsume 5 pounds of sugar. So you owe me 5 pounds of sugar. In which case, it's overconsumption. Either way, it's a valid case. So how do you settle for that anomaly? What you do is do subsequent adjustments. So if you go to my goal, right, put the purchase order in, and before you do a goods receipt, you have to select subsequent adjustments. And the subsequent adjustments is against what? Is against the purchase order. Now, what do you want to adjust? You want to adjust for 5 pounds of flour, and you can say it's an underconsumption, or it's so many pounds of sugar, and it's an overconsumption. Right? Let's say in both cases it's five pounds or sugar and five pounds of flour. Both of them is a case of underconsumption. Check if everything is okay. Okay. Item okay. Okay. Do a check again. Item OK. Check again. All right. Document is OK. And click Save. Document is saved. Now, if you go to MMBE, check your sugar. the additional 5 pounds would now have been sent to the vendor. So, as part of subsequent adjustments, depending on if there is excess stock available with the vendor or short supply, in which case he might have consumed more than what is provided, you can supply or take back stock from the vendor. If you supply in excess, it will be shown as stock provided to the vendor. If you take it back, it should have been available with the vendor. So you can't take back stock that you have not given. So if you have stock available with the vendor, you can take it back. For example, there is five pounds with the vendor, right? Now you can go to my go. And as part of subsequent adjustment against that PO, what you can do is, okay, I want to take back three pounds of flour and three pounds of sugar and item okay. Item OK. Check if everything is OK. Save it. Right. Now if you go check MMBE for sugar or flour, you see what happened? 
So you have taken three pounds back from the vendor. So what have we just seen? So let's summarize what we have seen about subcontracting. We have seen what is subcontracting. Subcontracting is a process of getting goods manufactured. From whom? From a subcontractor or a vendor. You provide the raw materials, he supplies the finished goods. That's essentially what subcontracting is. To make it simple, I've given the case of a wedding cake. Right? We operate a coffee shop. We don't know how to make wedding cakes. Or we are not in the business of making wedding cakes, but we do get some orders. So what do we do? We supply the goods to a subcontractor, somebody who specializes in wedding cakes. He takes the raw materials, makes the beautiful wedding cake, ships it back to us. That's it. That is a subcontracting order. How do you make this happen? In SAP, the item category is L. L for subcontracting. The moment you put L, it says, oops, I need the components. Okay, at the line item level, put the components in. This is a manual way of putting components. If you know that this wedding cake is going to contain flour, sugar, blah, 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 you could create it as a bomb. Go to CS01, create a bomb, and SAP would not ask you to put the components it will very well go pull it from the bomb. Either way, you enter the components and you don't issue the goods, physically it's an issue, but you do a transfer posting with reference to the purchase order. That's the easiest way to do. You don't need to do it with reference because it's all transfer posting anyway. It's all your goods just staying with the vendor. Right, And then step number five is when the vendor is ready with your cake, he ships it back. So you go to my go and receive the goods. Right, Assuming all the raw materials are consumed. Now, if you need adjustments, meaning the vendor must have over consumed or the vendor has under consumed goods in which case he wants to send the raw materials back either way you can do this is goods receipt and you can also do my go subsequent adjustment whereby any deficiencies in stock that the vendor has faced can be adjusted. The vendor says, I have consumed more than you have shipped me. All right, we can send more to you. Or uh, the vendor says, Oh, you know what? You've given me 100 kilos and I just use 50 kilos. So here is your 50 kilos back. Sure, we'll take it back. Now, again, in the context of wedding cakes, it's very trivial. But to take a more valid example, we have talked about milling a turbine for GE. GE sends that special material to the miller, somebody with this special lathe. He'll do the lathe through the entire day and then do what? He'll ship us back the finished product. And that raw material that's left out or scrap that is left out after the milling operation 
can also be sent back. That's called as a byproduct. Either way, the key difference I want to highlight is subcontracting is different from the standard purchase order. The standard purchase order is when you're just buying the goods. You don't care how the customer makes it. The raw materials is his problem. In a subcontracting, you give the raw materials, the vendor will create the finished product, send it back to you along with any subsequent adjustments of either overconsumption or under consumption of the raw materials. That is subcontracting. 